Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to our basically R&D studio. We are having another webinar session today, and it will be about reality integration and tracking. But before we start, let me give you a quick introduction about Zero Density. So Zero Density offers the next level of virtual production with real-time visual effects. It provides Unreal Engine native platform Realty Engine with advanced real-time compositing system. Reality supports industry standard mechanical and optical tracking systems. And with this webinar series, we'll talk tracking technology, reality integration, and projects. So let me first introduce you our basically speakers. Today we have um, equipment, camera support systems, and trackman with us. So we are, we are, uh, we are hosting uh, the managing partner Torsten Mika from Trackman and director of operations Germany and R&D product manager Martin Driesbach. Do you, do you guys want to say hello to our attendees? Yeah. Yes, of course. Hello, everybody. Warm welcome to Trackman we Lab here in Cologne, Germany. Hello. Well, we are having a bird's view seeing them today. <laughs> it's nice. So before starting, let me introduce ourselves. My name is Birim. I'm a digital marketing expert at Zero Density. Hello, everyone. This is Onur. I'm responsible for business development at Zero Density. Yes. So let's start with a quick introduction of TrackMan and Agripment camera support systems. A very brief company interview in overview from uh, Torsten and Martin. Yes. So hello everybody, as you can see today, we're concentrating on some fantastic stuff. We from TrackMan, we are the one-stop shop for camera tracking and tracking in general, because we started in the 90s and since this time, we developed various tracking systems, tracking systems for cameras, for humans, for objects, whatever moves can be tracked, right? And in this sense, we developed many, many different systems. Whatever we do, we provide turnkey solutions, means those solutions are perfectly integrated into the zero density render engine, right? So um, it integrates all the parameters, for example, of the camera tracking, including the lens data. So from zero density side, you just receive all the data and you have a perfect solution with maximum precision and reliability. It's very important to understand that TrackMan does not only provide a single product. We're providing a product line. And most of all, we are providing solutions. Means we share our knowledge together with you, right? So whatever job you have to do, we pick from the wide uh, bandwidth of our solutions and suggest the best uh, product for your specific job. So sometimes, talking about camera tracking systems, we are recommending, for example, optical tracking systems with or without markers. And sometimes we're recommending mechanical tracking because mechanical tracking can still do a very nice job. And to highlight this, I'd like to hand over to Martin Dresbach from Equipment, who are providing various um, mechanical tracking systems. Martin. Thank you. Yeah. As Thornton introduced me and Biron as well. Welcome. I'm Martin. I'm uh, from the German branch of Equipment. Equipment is a Dutch-based company. Headquarter is in the Netherlands. We are around uh, 50 employees uh, with all branches, and we are a manufacturer of camera cranes, remote heads, dollies, telescopic camera cranes, robotics, which is getting more and more popular in the modern automated world. Um, and uh, yeah, we are a long-time partner since more than 12 years now in mechanical tracking. We joined up with TrackMan. So all our products have been redesigned or even designed based on deliver perfect tracking data. Uh, and we always do from our side, always mechanical tracking. And an example, which we are going through today to explain what is mechanical tracking in detail. We have here our extreme T10 telescopic crane, which was uh, actually designed from scratch for the use for AR and VR. This crane, as I explained, a fully mechanical track camera crane. That means every axis that is moving needs to have an encoder. We need to get the data, how it is moving, and we collect all these access information into one centralized 
tracking interface. This tracking interface is running the talk track software uh, from TrackMan, adjusted for our needs. And this is our universal tracking interface that we use for camera cranes, telescopic camera cranes, our tower system, our rail system, our remote heads, even with uh, fluid heads that we have mutual designs together, for example, with our colleagues from Miller. We all do this together in mechanical tracking into that tracking interface. As you can see, a telescopic crane moves a lot and there are a lot of mechanical components that go in and out and move left and right. And to get precise mechanical tracking, you need to have precise mechanics. If you have equipment that bends too much, that this has a lot of torsion, uh, does not make repeatable movement, even your encoder data will never be precise. And doing this, your design needs to take care of all the flaws. You need to have a perfect balance. One example on the T10 is telescopic camera cranes always have a leveling system. Normal camera cranes um, use a so-called parallelogram where they stabilize the platform. And the leveling system on a telescopic crane is for the AR, VR use, one of the most critical parts of it. If this system it does not work reliable, your whole calibration and all your presence in tracking will never be accurate. So besides getting information from the tilt axis when the arm is moving up and down, you need to know how fast is the arm going? Is it an acceleration that goes very fast or is it a slow movement? So that the movement of the leveling system is very precise. For this, besides having encoders on the trunnion doing the tilt uh, angle, we have an gyro sensors, accelerators, which actually measure the data and combining this in the profile that the leveling system always stays smooth, no matter how fast and how smooth or how small uh, your deviation in the tilt angle is. Also, your crane arm needs to be very stiff, especially when you have longer crane arms beyond three, four, five meters, going up to 15 meters, your bending of your arm, thanks to physics, uh, everything wants to bend because there's a load on it, but everything needs to be stiff. As we are using here carbon fiber components, we are lightweight and we are stiff. So the overall bending of this crane arm is almost neglectable in a full rig setup. And the telescopic movement in and out always needs to be the same. As explained in the beginning, all accesses in this setup, here in this setup, five encoder inputs going into the tracking interface. The tracking interface is the brain. Everything goes into that system, and then we have a configuration file, which is based on the system. Looking at the configuration, you see here the TalkTrack configuration, where you see a lot of numbers. Mostly these numbers are set for the um, system, like here, the telescopic crane. But besides the encoder information, you're getting the timing of the encoders, as well as the lens information, because we connect to the lens, we read out the lens, and we're using the TrackMan superior lens calibration. All this will be combined at the ends together with chip information and the data where we have to send to in one UDP network tracking stream. And we send the data to the zero density machine to a designated port, and we can send it up to multiple engines. If you have one engine that is providing an LED wall, an LED floor, and you have AR in the foreground. We all send that at the same time. We even can, um, we can do multicasting the, this data. And one of the advantages is all this system is handled from one company. So that means the crane, the operation maybe, and the complete calibration is done by either equipment track man or, of, or one of our partners. So that means you're getting fully processed data of position, orientation, lens information, distortion data, and camera information in one tracking stream. So the configuration on the zero density side is the most easiest you can have. You just choose the IP uh, where we have to send to, and you choose the port, and that's it. While we talked about a lot of uh, theory now, uh, I want to have my colleague Michael, which is operating the T10 in a one-man operation, now, to do it with a little bit of the graphics that we are having here and seeing what you can do with a telescopic camera frame. So you can approach any kind of graphics on a low shot, on a medium shot. You can go high. You can telescope in. You can telescope out. 
And whatever you do, you have the maximum flexibility. You can fly around and still having an absolute stiff and reliable tracking screen so that you can rely on even in higher speeds um, with music concerts, with AR enhancement, XR stages where you need to have seamless switch over. One of the advantages uh, of our uh, tracking stream and the lens calibration in combination with the zero density machine is the powerful rendering performance of the GPUs with the depths of field. As the lens calibration includes the focal distance as well, you can easily uh, use the focus even for the AR objects. So that means you can play and work and be creative with the AR graphics as you are uh, with a real uh, object. So that means uh, there is no, no flaw anymore because there were always complaints, okay, how much uh, see I the graphics and the graphics are not lighted and the graphics are always sharp no matter what I do. Now with the powerful GPU performance of the zero density machine, you can use the depths of field and create the most natural look of it. So seeing this crane, having the mechanical tracking in combination with the TrackMan protocol, including the lens calibration, I think you, you have a perfect package. And we do everything we do on this crane, we do with our tower system, we do with the robotics. We all do the same trick on all of our products and you're always getting the same reliable data. Perfect. So, Birin, I think uh, uh, you may have questions that popped in from uh, listeners on that. Uh Yes, thank you for a great product walkthrough. I think Honor has a question for you. Definitely, and while I'm asking my questions, uh, if our audience has some questions for uh, Martin think, for yeah. the mechanical uh, tracking part, uh, they're most welcome. So I have a question uh, indeed. I know that uh, Agripment has a very good integration and technical partnership with Trackman. But uh, are those two solutions and two companies kind of dedicated or exclusive to each other? Or are there any solutions that Agripment can also work with? I mean, Agripment is the manufacturer of the camera system. We choose on purpose the TrackMan Corporation. Uh, but we also, because of our worldwide rental department, which we are have with the Special Projects Division, we are able to retrofit also clients' system. But still, we're going to use the tracking interface which we use as our universal tracking interface and retrofit it to certain products where we know we get the mechanical reliable performance of. Understood. I will have one more question. Uh, it will be a more sales oriented question because uh, we have a very big potential uh, of business in China and sometimes we are getting these questions quite frequently. So. I believe that shipment and the purchase of these products are possible in that country, but it, is it also possible to rent these systems in China or in APAC overall? Because we are receiving a lot of requests in that area. China is for us, thanks for the question. Actually, it's a perfect question. China is for us one of the biggest markets. Uh, we, we spent the last five to six years to, uh, to deliver a lot of cranes for permanent installations for clients like CCTV, Tencent, um, all these kind of clients. So they have various kinds of products like robotic heads. They have uh, one-man operation cranes. They have uh, robotic systems. Uh, and our partner based in Beijing is also having um, equipment in its own rental department. So, of course, you don't have the full uh, branch of it, but you get a quite an amount of equipment you can rent in China, including the service that we are known for in combination also with Trekman. Thank you, Martin. Understood, thank uh, you. Before we move on, I actually want to give the audience an idea how this webinar flow will go. Uh, first, we listened Martin's uh, product walkthrough and you can still ask questions throughout the webinar. We can take them. And then we will uh, see Trackman's walkthrough. After that, Honor will explain how reality integration takes place with Agripment and Trackman in our own interface. So you'll see that. And we'll move on to uh, a couple of projects that all of these companies collectively uh, produced. 
and then we will wrap it up and call it a day. So now should we hear Torsten's walkthrough? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, if there are no further questions at the moment, then we are happy to take over. And as we have seen, and as Martin described, mechanical tracking is the perfect solution. And unfortunately, you are not here. But if you're standing here, it's really amazing. And to see this big guy moving without any noise, it's really fascinating. So next time, you're going to see this live. Um, coming from mechanical tracking, more to optical tracking, because sometimes it's uh, not possible to apply mechanical tracking at all. For example, you have a pedestal moving or a handheld, a shoulder camera, right? There's no way to attach sensors and coders to the person, right? This is nonsense. So there you need optical camera tracking systems. To describe it a little bit, I have to go back in history. Uh, so as I, as I described, we started in the 90s, and there the first idea was to have an outside-in camera tracking system, right? Where you have a couple of sensor cameras watching towards the broadcast camera to determine the exact position of it. Uh, this works nice in general. Unfortunately, it turned out that this is very costly if you use it in larger studios because you simply need more sensor cameras, right? And in addition, it turned out that the precision is quite limited. So you need additional systems like gyroscope, whatever, to smooth that, to make it more uh, stable and not visible to the human eye. So then like uh, in the zero years, we, it's more it becomes more fancy to use um, uh, inside out systems means you have just one single sensor camera attached to the broadcast camera looking to the outside world to detect objects or whatever in the environment, right? Uh, we also have a system like this, which is called Viotrack S with arbitrary markers. So you can attach infrared reflecting stickers somewhere in the environment to measure the position orientation of your camera, right? Uh, this works very nicely in many occasions. The drawbacks are a little bit that, of course, you have to spend lots of effort before you start filming, and you have to calibrate those things. Uh, also, it's not possible outside the studio world, right? If you go outside, there's no ceiling, there's no roof, so you can't do that. Because of that, we also have another optical but marker-based camera tracking system, which is called Viotrack F. This is the coded floor. So instead of arbitrary markers, we have dedicated markers. And over here, you can see just an example of such a coded floor consisting of uh, lots of patterns, which we know already. So this pattern is pre-calibrated. There's no need to calibrate it again. So whenever you take a camera, over this coded floor, it works immediately. In addition, you can do this inside the studio or even outside the studio. It works both ways, right? Nevertheless, this is still something which uh, works with markers. Today, we like to concentrate more on markerless tracking systems. And this is the latest stuff from, this, uh, from these years. Here, we are not working with dedicated markers, not with uh, stickers, tapes, whatever. We are using just the environment, right? Just the natural environment. So the system works with objects it can find in the studio or even outside the studio, yeah? So um, how can we do this? Uh, from a hardware side, this is very simple. So the only thing you need to do is to attach a sensor camera to the actual broadcast camera. So whenever you move with the broadcast camera, the sensor camera will follow exactly this movement, right? When we now see what the sensor camera is looking at, you see that it's detecting automatically the environment. So it makes, makes use out of whatever patterns in the environment, for example, an equipment logo or a monitor or the ceiling, or a piece of the floor, whatever. Only rigid objects. Everything which is moving, like me, or any other objects, are not used. So how can we measure it? Let's assume that we are starting from scratch, and we are 
the very first time in this environment, right? Now you see that the system is automatically detecting 2D potential candidates in the environment already. And the only thing I have to do as a user is only to press a button. Because doing this, the system selects those candidates just in 2D. Now we are moving slightly to the side, seeing the same objects, but from a different perspective. And now I simply take another keyframe and the system automatically determines the exact 3D position of all those objects. So we are creating a 3D land map of the environment. So instead of dedicated markers, now our complete environment is used as a tracking reference, right? The good thing is, I only need to do this once. As you can see, this works within seconds, but nevertheless, the next day I come back to the same environment, I simply reload my 3D life reconstruction, and I have the same, exactly the same environment like before, right? So I don't need to do anything again. My origin is exactly at the same place, uh, and I can just start working very easy. To show you that we can uh, really work with that, <laughs> uh, Thomas is helping us a little bit and uh, lifting the camera because all our optical camera tracking systems can work handheld, right? So you can take it on the shoulder, you can put it on the steady cam, you can put it on a pedestal, on a crane, whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, we directly track the camera itself and therefore you can freely move and you see the virtual um, objects also moving accordingly. So if Tom is doing some, some stuff, some movement towards or backwards, sorry he's not a cameraman, but I guess it perfectly shows that even with not professional movements, we have the perfect tracking. So while we are putting this back, I like to summarize that with this Viotrack R system, we have a system which works without markers in the natural environment, right? So some people complain about this and saying, yeah, uh, correct, you can work with uh, natural features, but unfortunately this will not work in bad lighting conditions. For example, if you work in complete darkness and Honestly speaking, they are right. It's not working at all. It's a physical fact. If you don't see something with your sensor camera, then obviously you cannot track. Very simple. Um, I mean, by the way, if you're using, for example, a green screen, it will never be completely dark, right? But let's assume it is the case, it is completely dark, and we just have uh, this sensor camera which cannot uh, see enough of those natural objects. Here, the idea, is very simple. Let us enrich this environment, which is too dark to track, with additional feature points, with additional objects. Those can be uh, bright uh, natural features, but at the same time, this can be dedicated patterns, for example. So in order to do this, we go over to this camera, and here we prepared uh, the rec sensor camera but in addition we have now an infrared LED light which can illuminate the environment in addition. The sensor camera is now sensitive for both. For the regular daylight you can see with the human eye but in addition also sensible for the infrared light of this LED. So if we're now switching to what the sensor camera is looking at you see, for example, a piece of the ceiling, and let's assume that in the center, uh, it is very uh, dark, right? Too dark to track, let's assume this. So in here, we simply put some additional stickers. And now if we turn on the infrared light, you see that those become very bright, right? And now the tracking algorithm looks for those additional feature points and for the natural environment. And you as a user, for you it's very simple. After this is installed, the only thing you have to do, and you learned that already, is to move the camera, right? And now the system will generate the, those tracking points automatically, right? That's the only thing you do. 
So the natural feature points will be tracked. And in addition, those dedicated infrared markers. So we explained that this is a good solution for those delicate situations with very bad lighting conditions, right? Um, but we have another addition to the Viatrack R, to the regular Viatrack R system. So we explained about the Viatrack R system, which is combining infrared light and daylight. And now we had another idea. So the idea is, we're having a monocular vision system, only the sensor camera, yeah? One single sensor camera. Why not applying this to the regular broadcast camera? Because also the broadcast camera does have a single video stream, and that's the only thing we need for the tracking, right? So instead of it, we can use the broadcast camera, and, and especially we like to use uh, cameras which are not easy to track. One perfect example is a drone, right? A drone flies in a very high environment. You cannot put any mechanics to it because it's too high, it's freely flying. And uh, because it's usually quite lightweight, you also do not like to attach lots of sensors to it. So here we are only using the image of the drone itself as both as a tracking reference and as the regular camera picture. So we went to the shop, bought a DJI drone, just a very affordable tool. And now we are flying over our city a little bit. And while doing this, we are doing the same stuff. We simply press two keyframes, right? And the system is generating the tracking points automatically. That's all we do. We just press two times the button, and then we can do the trick. Now we can fly 360 degrees freely around the environment, and the system will automatically enlarge our uh, map of the environment. So again, we're doing a 3D reconstruction, but live. So you don't do it in post, you do it live on the actual footage. The good thing is the very next day, you come back again, same stuff applies. You can reload your 3D reconstruction and you can work from that, right? So starting from scratch, can you maybe show us this? When we, when we open the system, right? So we go back, that's the original video. You use that as a, as a feed. You reload the scene and then you have the tracking for this. And you can apply it, of course, to the zero density graphics. You can freely move this object in any environment. So one important thing, uh, this is just an example, right? This is just a, a regular off-the-shelf DJI drone. Of course, you can do the same stuff with, for example, professional shoots from a helicopter or from any other device. For example, you have a cable cam, flying cam, flying around. Even here, you can use just the video image uh, for the tracking. Last thing I like to explain, when, for example, you have, um, especially during those corona times, the problem that you're not able to send people to uh, a foreign place, then you can just ask somebody to send you the live video. So you transmit the video live and use this stream as an input, as a reference for your tracking. And you sit at home having uh, the, the graphics engine from Zero Density plus the workstation from Trackman, and you can deliver the complete graphics out of your hand, just on a remote place, not uh, with the uh, requirement to be at the, uh, the location itself, right? Just an idea to think about. So that's just an overview over tracking. Obviously, this is maybe a little bit too much, maybe a little bit too confusing. So we are happy to answer your questions. And we're, of course, happy to having uh, private sessions with uh, our clients, with our listeners and watchers uh, later on. So yeah. I hope I did not confuse you too much. 
No, not at all. Actually, thank you for a great walkthrough. We have a couple of questions rushing in and I want to take them by order. Um, so first of all, what hardware is recommend recommended to make it work smoothly? Make the markerless um, tracking work smoothly. Yeah, we have two options here. You can uh, purchase an off the shelf, uh, I can say the brand, I guess, HP machine, right? Uh, the secret is just a good GPU power. So we are using uh, the, the older um, 1080 or the latest RTX 2080 uh, graphic cards. Uh, the algorithms are running on those uh, GPUs and that's the only thing you need. Uh, so you can use your own workstations or you can purchase it from us. For the studio applications especially, we have a more smaller box uh, which is 20 by 20 centimeters. And this box can also be used as a workstation. In that case, you can, for example, attach it to the pedestal itself or to, to your device, right? So two choices. Okay, thank you. Um, how do you match the markerless tracking coordinate system with a different tracking system, such as an encoder-based system? How does it work? Very good question. That must be an expert. So <laughs> as I explained, in the, in the GUI, right, we have many, many, many feature points. And for example, when here, when we prepared the, the, the demo, we first installed the crane. And then on the floor, we said, ah, let's, let this be the origin and let be a second point, the, for example, positive x-axis, right? And with the optical tracking system, it tracks those points as well. So within the GUI, you only click on those points saying, this is the origin, this is the positive x-axis, and you are done. So the optical will perfectly match the mechanical tracking system. Same applies, for example, at the drone flight, right? Then you go to wherever you like to place those, uh, this virtual player, you click at the corner of uh, this or just somewhere in 3D space, and there you mark the origin. And from that point on, you can, of course, freely adjust the virtual, the AR objects. Thank you. I keep taking questions, by the way. So can you talk about the accuracy of the markerless tracking system? How accurate it is? Yeah. So markerless tracking, markerless or marker-based, you cannot uh, give an... Uh, a, um, a specific number, right? It's nonsense to say it's like one centimeter or two centimeters because what we need are actually angles, right? So if you have a sensor camera which looks to the outside world, the question is how many pixels you have to orientate yourself. This is the main component for the precision. And here, first of all, we have um, very high resolution sensor cameras, the best in the industry. So therefore we can provide the highest quality. The quality is so high that we do not require additional sensors like IMUs, right? Gyroscopes, whatever, um, to smooth the data. Our native data is precise enough uh, for perfect tracking. Does this answer the question or? Yes, I think so. By the way, you're allowed to ask follow-up questions if we didn't get it correctly, so just don't hesitate to write. This is a very interactive webinar session. And so, Onur, do you want to add something? Yes, actually, I have a few questions on my own. Um, so one is, uh, the question I had on my mind before the webinar was about the outdoors. I think you already answered that in a very good way with the footage that you just shown, but you also mentioned that you don't have a single product, but you have a product line. I want to go ahead and ask, which product do you recommend for outdoor projects? This is my first question. My second question is, Trackman is a company from Germany. You are, your headquarters are based in Germany. What kind of support do you provide for the German clients and for the clients outside of Germany, maybe in other continents? I think this yeah, question start. goes for both of you. Definitely. Actually, <laughs> that was the question also I want to ask for Martin, but uh, I also skipped that. If Martin can also 
uh, ex uh, answer for the support part after Thorsten, I will be happy. Okay. Whatever. Whatever. It's a support <laughs> question and support, like always. We're providing support, definitely. As I explained, we are providing solutions. So it's not enough just to ship some equipment out. Of course, we're taking care afterwards. So we have our own support team who can handle this. And we also have international partners who are also certified and who could um, uh, provide such services in every uh, continent. Yes. What about you, Martin? Same applies to us as well. We have our specialists from the German branch as well as from the headquarters. They're mostly doing the installations and also providing the rental jobs. But we also have certified support people in certain countries, like mentioned before in China, our partner there, um, as they have their own systems, they mainly do all the installations and the support on their own, of course. There are always questions that maybe come to us, and then we do a mutual enforced uh, support. But in certain countries, our dealers and service providers, which also do maintenance and service for our regular products, they are able to support as well. For the question for the outdoor production, um, <clears throat> actually from our side, from the cranes, robotics, whatever side, it is because we are mechanically tracked. It makes no difference for us if it's rainy, snowy, or whatever. You choose the same equipment that you would choose doing a regular production. I've done uh, personally uh, uh, two years ago the European qualifiers for soccer. We did that European uh, all over Europe. And yeah, soccer, it can be dry, but it also can be pouring cats and dogs. Huh? So rainy like hell. And you have no clue, uh, you, you're wet still to, yeah, to the deepest spot of your shoes. Uh, and still, these systems work because they, they are mechanically, they're encoder-based. They're completely, even if the lens is completely uh, covered with, uh, with rain and humidity, it still works. That's, again, the advantage of a uh, um, mechanical track system. I totally agree. Therefore, we said that we are the one-stop shop. We can provide different solutions. Yeah. So if I'm listening to somebody who likes to plan to uh, have a job on, uh, with snow, for example, right, where the environment is only white, we recommend mechanical tracking. Yeah? We will not rely on just natural features if it snows. Um, if, we, if you like to use or if you have to use optical tracking because you want to use, I don't know, a handheld camera in addition to a crane, then obviously you have to change your environment in a way that you can still work. For example, we're providing something like this, a reference on the floor, in the background, at the desk of the talent, uh, which can be used as an additional reference object. But Martin is right, if it's I don't know, uh, completely snowing and you only see white, then of course the system, no optical system can work. Therefore, we rely yeah. on the mechanical tracking. Um, actually, I want to ask a follow-up question because I think the support issue is very interesting. As Rodensity, we also have dozens, if not hundreds of certified engineers around the world. But for equipment and trackmen, what does a certified engineer mean and how do you certify these engineers? Certified means that uh, for us, of course, we have, we have a little bit of two worlds. We have the classic equipment product, like a camera crane, where you have a mechanical, electronical engineer from a support company that is certified. So he knows, based on our support documentation and the training, how to take certain things apart, maybe to replace bearings, to replace a motor, to replace something. So this is the one part, and then you have the the service people that are able to cover the tracking part. Some of our service people can handle both. Some only can do this part and some only can do that part. It's always a little bit depending which product in which part of the world are we. In Europe, I think uh, we have more supporters than equipment. Uh, uh, in the rest of the world, it's a little bit de uh, depending on how we are situated with dealers and support companies. In the US, we are quite strong due to our uh, office we have there, uh, so we can support within the US, but of course it's a big country. So uh, it's uh, when you're on the East Coast and you, you need uh, urgent support on the West Coast, of course there's a certain difference in it, but still we, we, we have at certain areas companies that support us. Of course, sometimes you're not in the deepest level of any support, but still we always have people from the headquarter because we have the manufacturing there. And as I mentioned, we are around 50 people. So there's always somebody that can help. 
I like to add that uh, two things. First of all, we have uh, very nice partners at the Zero Density who are, for example, using our stuff in their own studios at the moment. As far as I know, we're using a crane from equipment and you're also using our optical tracking systems. So you are familiar with the systems already and also you can do some additional support, right? This is one important thing and systems depending on what you choose and therefore depending on what we recommend, uh, some systems you can very easily uh, control over a remote connection, right? So you can send a team somewhere. We are sitting still in Germany and can install, calibrate and adjust the system. So this is especially during Corona times, a very important thing. True. And yes, we are using equipment and trackman in our studio, but we'll come to that later. So I keep yes. uh, taking questions. So how many targets or points does the system pick up to make a 3D map? I think this is for uh, so, the markerless. Right, solution. right. So we need, in theory, a minimum of 20 points in order to start the process, right? Uh, of course, as always, the more points we have, the better the reliability gets. Yeah? In a natural environment like here, you easily have like a few hundreds, thousand points. Uh, when you fly with the drone, this is the same stuff. Uh, you, will, you can have millions of those, but you don't need. So you actually just shrinking the amount of uh, feature points you're actually using. Okay, thank you. So moving on, um, what sort of tracking algorithms and protocol are you using? Tracking algorithms? Yeah, we give them for free on our web page. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I think this question is a bit sensitive. But yeah, maybe, maybe you can answer the protocol part. <laughs> yeah. the, protocol, the protocol is uh, one dedicated protocol. As I explained, we started in the 90s and there were only two protocols available. That was the 3D one, Radamec actually, and our protocol. Since this time, we are still supporting this very old uh, protocol, but we make sure that it's uh, perfectly integrated in the render engine. And besides that, because we are the manufacturers, we are the developers of the system, we can also uh, provide other formats. We can still send 3D format or anything else, er anything which is required. Asking basically for a demo version, but hmm. do you have any kind of thing, Thorsten? Well, Talking about the mechanical stuff, of it's course, difficult. it's a little bit difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, that, that's, that's, <laughs> that's what I thought of. Okay. That's the problem, but, but it just, still saves a physical crane. So, but just uh, talking yeah. about camera tracking software, yes, we also uh, provide demo systems of this. You have to make sure that you have the proper machine with the proper GPU to have enough power. And then we send you a license dongle and then you can test the software. So usually we do both. We first do a private demo where we be trying to find out what are the needs of the client. Does he really need this optical tracking system, a different tracking system, mechanical tracking system, whatever. And after we found out what he really needs, then we're providing the software and he can play around. Okay, great. So we have a couple of questions about the lens file and the lens calibration. Yeah. Uh, so track, Trackman also provides lens data and how do you do lens calibration? For the lens calibration, we have a 3D object, a physical object, which we put in front of the lens. Then we connect the lens to our workstation and we're automatically running through the whole space, a whole range of zoom and focus, collecting photographs. Then we are doing photogrammetry to calculate the exact position of the nodal point in 3D space. So you not only get the position, uh, fixed position, you get the travel of the nodal point back and forth. Also all the other optical parameters like the K1, K2 distortion data. We actually can uh, provide up to eight different parameters for the distortion but unfortunately, so far, nobody implemented that. So in the future, we will maybe even provide a better service. So same uh, calibration applies actually to the mechanical tracking, right? It's the same stuff. Um, and the same lens files. So and the lens. same lens files, so you can easily exchange. Yeah. 
Uh, one thing I have to add is when you're using, for example, a prime lens, not a zoom lens, just a prime lens, it is a fixed focal length. So the duration for the calibration is much easier. Here, you can have one of our uh, reference targets and you can calibrate those lenses on your own very quickly within a couple of minutes. If you don't have the time to calibrate, then we always provide a second option. We calibrate it many lenses already, and we have a lens file which describes all the optical properties. So if you're using, for example, a Canon 14 times lens, you easily load the lens file, for example, at the crane, and you just apply it, right? And if there are slight changes, you can adjust it at the spot. And then and you have immediately the solution to track. And that saves a lot of time because you don't need to do a dedicated lens calibration on spot because due to the library, we have a high amount of lenses and even a high amount of, of certain lenses like Thorsten mentioned, the Canon 14 times or the Fujinon uh, 50 times. That's, these are lenses which are getting very popular and we have a bunch of lens files. So we even can shuttle through a lot of some of these lens files and then we say, okay, this one matches 99% and then we do the last last percentage on site and that speeds up it and it's completely independent from the render part because the lens file is at either the tracking interface or the, the vial uh, workstation. Yes, and about the lens calibration, you only need to do it once, right? You don't have to use do it again every time you use the system. No, the only thing you have to take care of, if you detach the lens and reassemble it to the camera, you have to uh, adjust the uh, so-called censorship values. That's because of the physical reattachment. You slightly, in, in tens mm. of a millimeter, reattach the lens, but that is a, a process that is done in two minutes. And, and then it only applies if you have removed the lens and put it back on. For example, you have a studio where you only have uh, one lens for two cameras and you use Monday the lens on this camera and Tuesday, the lens on the, on the track camera, you put back on the lens, you adjust the center shift and work. Mm. But you're right, you only have to do it once. After the installations, you don't have to touch it again. Yeah. Yes, and there is a corona question. Can you do it remotely? What? Yes, as the I lens explained. <laughs> <laughs> the lens calibration. The lens calibration, yes, we can. <laughs> You, that you can do a lens calibration. This can be done in theory. As I explained already, we can do complete installations remotely. Of course, in, in case of the crane, this is kind of nonsense, right? Because if we ship the crane, then there will be also somebody with it uh, installing it. But just talking about optical camera tracking system, for example, for a drone flight, yes, we can do that remotely. Okay. So uh, before taking any more questions, I'm going to move on to the reality integration part uh, from Honor because there are some questions that how it in integrates the trackman and equipment systems. Sure. Into our so Honor, can you show us? Of course, I will go ahead, actually share my screen and uh, it will be quite brief. So hopefully you are able to see yes. um, my node graph right now. Yeah. So firstly, I want to go ahead and say a few things uh, about Reality Engine. Uh, just for the newcomers, uh, for the ones uh, that are getting to know uh, the, about the software uh, these days. So Reality Engine uh, is a very a unique compositing system. It's a GPU-based, node-based compositor. So everything uh, is basically represented as nodes on our system, and this is what we are calling uh, an R graph. This is our playground uh, in our compositor. So we are connecting these nodes with each other and designing basically our workflow. So a video input uh, in this uh, R graph is a node. A video out is a node. Reality Keyer, it's a piece of software. It's a, a real-time uh, image-based keyer. It is a node in this graph. And camera tracking, uh, which is TrackMan in this case, and as Thorsten mentioned, we are actually using an equipment crane with TrackMan in our own studio. Uh, so TrackMan is a node in our R graph. 
And um, to talk about the integration, I mean, actually, it is uh, quite, quite straightforward. To be perfectly frank, uh, Agripment and Trackman is doing the 99% of the job. They are uh, coming to the studio, installing the system, uh, making the lens calibration. And what we do is, uh, what you do is with your reality engine, you just uh, take the Ethernet cable and plug it into your uh, reality engine. And uh, you create this node on your R graph. And uh, we enable this node and we define which port it is. And voila, we uh, start to get our camera tracking data. And it, maybe we can uh, move our camera a little just to show that the flow of the data. So as you can see, our uh, data in transform and round transform uh, sections are moving. The section below, zoom, focus, FOV, these kind of uh, sections are belong belonging to the lens data. We are uh, actively getting this data also. And if you want to align your axis for some reason, you are able to do that with device mapping. Uh, and if you want to add any kind of offsets uh, to your uh, camera tracking system, you can also do it freely in here. Let's say that you want to take, uh, uh, you want to use the focal distance data. For this timing, we are not using it, but I'm just clicking it. And in my note, I'm starting to have this section. And if I take this uh, floating data, I can freely use it in the rest of my uh, R graph freely. I can take it and use it in my uh, post-process node, or uh, basically anywhere, uh, any node or any algorithm that can accept a floating number. So it can also be a mathematical algorithm that you designed, will, which will be represented as a node. And let's say that if the depth of field data is above some level, then maybe execute this animation. So the e engine is flexible uh, at that sense. And our integration with Trackman and Equipment, it's quite straightforward. Uh, just to give you a one-liner, I can say it is like plug and play. So that is basically it. Uh, as I promised, I kept it uh, pretty brief. <laughs> and uh, just to sum it up, uh, the installation and lens calibration uh, are being done precisely by agreement and trackment. What we do is just uh, plug the cable into our reality engine and just define our node and uh, start to do our compositing. So there was a question that is it via a plugin or, or an external protocol, but it's not. No, it's not. We uh, have our native uh, support to Trackman uh, camera tracking solution, so we don't need any external plugins or solutions to do that. Yes, thank you, Onur. Um, there is a reality engine related question that will is can <laughs> I can't speak? Can we get live data, external live data, into our live? set how does it work with reality engine sure i mean uh, defining that workflow is a topic of a whole new uh, webinar but yeah, just give, brief. just give me the brief answer of course you can uh, most of our clients are actively using it like uh, stock market data social media data weather data or football score data uh, so you can uh, of course uh, freely uh, use that in real time without a problem Okay, thank you. So let's uh, move on. I, I keep asking a couple of questions to Torsten and Martin. So would you recommend the R system or the S system for an XR studio application, but not with great screen with an LED wall? Yeah, if, there, if there's an LED wall inside, it doesn't matter, right? You can still use uh, the ceiling as the reference with markers or without the markers. Same applies to the crane. For the crane, it doesn't matter at all. Even if the, uh, if the um, LED cave is completely closed, the crane is inside and it can freely work. So that would be a, a perfect choice. And it has been used. Um, for the mechanical tracking, it has been used. We recently did, like a few weeks ago, a huge uh, heavy metal festival called the uh, Wacken Worldwide. And that was an XR stage. Uh, that was used with the T10 as well, with the T10 T crane. So, uh, yeah, there the seamless uh, switch over between the LED and the augmented world was perfectly matching. Okay. Yeah. 
Uh, Martin, actually, I have a question about equipment, purely out of my curiosity. What is the tallest crane that you ever manufactured, and what is the shortest model? You mean the coolest or the longest? <laughs> I think it's the longest. The longest, yeah, the tallest, longest, yeah. yeah the, the tallest is uh, roughly about uh, 13 meters. That's a, a fixed crane arm length. So that's the tallest crane arm we manufacture our own. And the smallest is whatever you want. Uh, I mean, we can, we can cut it right <laughs> two millimeters. Uh, we are the manufacturer, so that's it. So we are not putting something on something that is something else coming from somebody else. Uh, we are the manufacturers, we design, we even, like the crane you have in your studio, the TDT crane, um, we have clients that have very tiny, narrow uh, green screen studio, studios where they say, okay, I need a crane, but I, I can't use anything that is off the shelf. Um, and I would like to uh, um, need something special. I says, yeah, we just cut it and we make it for you. So whatever size you need in certain cranes, we can manufacture them because we are the manufacturer of the cranes. <laughs> Understood. Uh, so let's move on to the project because I didn't realize that it's been an hour. So let's start talking about the projects. And as my friend gets, ready, uh, gets the showreel ready um, to the full screen, yes, please. Uh, let's talk about which projects we're gonna, well, showcase here. Okay, what we see is actually a combination of various projects uh, our uh, Dutch rental uh, colleagues from Holland did together with NEP in Holland using Zero Density. These are various shows. One is a music dancing casting show called Dancing, uh, which you can see here that we used uh, a large 50-foot uh, uh, telescopic crane. We used the rail system, so that's the uh, dancing project. Um, then. There's another show uh, called Kinderen for Kinderen, which is actually, it's a large stage production. Uh, this production was done uh, in, uh, in, in Rotterdam, also in Holland. That's actually the arena where the Eurovision Song Contest was supposed to be in May this year and will happen, we all hope, next year there again. So it's a large arena uh, where also large scale uh, set extension were used to replace the roof and the complete design and operation was done by NEP. And we provided also a huge telescopic crane as well as a rail system. Um, then there was another show, which is actually the, I think it's a television award show from Holland. It's called Televisiering. Um, that was done also with a telescopic crane, a rail system, as well as uh, the bio system on the pedestal. It was a combination of uh, music performances and of course award and uh, everything was live. Huh? All these shows were live, so there's no rehearsal and, oh, let's do it again. So uh, if it's not good, you can't do it. Huh? So, uh, and all that was done by, by our uh, rental department uh, in Holland in combination with uh, NEP Netherlands. Okay, thank you. So let's start with the dancing. Uh, this was not a live show. Um, for the dancers and singers, uh, I think they recorded some scenes and uh, they used it later on the show and it was pretty interesting. And you already gave some details about it, do you, but do you have anything to add? This was in yeah, 2019. Well, it was a show, it was a dancing and uh, singing uh, a casting show. I personally haven't done it, so I, I'm, I'm not really completely deep into it. I know the technology that we used in it. Yeah. Um, but uh, there were a lot of objects. There were virtual dancers, there were set extensions, there were uh, light effects, visual effects to enhance it, to make a stage that was already looking nice, even make it nicer. And there, there was also a combination of tracked and non-tracked cameras uh, and to also create this huge a uh, visual, uh, visual uh, performance. And for every specific singer and dancer, they had a different uh, lineup of virtual elements and shows. So it was a yeah. very impressive yeah. show, in my opinion. And, and it maybe, went over various, yeah. various amount of shows. So it was not just one show, it was various shows, it was a series. <laughs> yes. Um, 
And also a side note, NEP the Netherlands is one of Zerodensi's strategic partners, one of three in the globe actually, so we are always happy to share our projects. So let's move on to the next one. Uh, this is Kinderan for Kinderan. For yeah, I say it's yeah. children for children. That's actually Dutch for it. And uh, it's, it's a children's show for children uh, at the end of the year always. And uh, last year was the uh, big anniversary show, uh, which was done in the Ahoy Arena in Rotterdam. Uh, and the idea was to make the stage and the audience, which was already quite big in this studio, to enhance it and make an incredible, huge, extended set of it. And uh, the the let's say the challenge on this production was a little bit that while we building up and did the calibration, the stage was built. So uh, normally, when you come in, the stages are ready. You build your cameras, you you align everything, and everything is ready. Uh, but there was a little bit the challenge that. Uh, while we opened the doors of our trucks, when we opened uh, and get the equipment out, the stage was not even there. So we had to work seamlessly together with light department, with construction department, to, uh, to yeah, that everybody was able to do a smooth work. Okay, thank you. And the next project would be, if I can play it. Yes, it is Televisia Ringala. Um, yes. This was also very recently, and it was fully AR. Yeah, please yeah, go it was on. Fully, yeah, it was fully AR. It was, uh, it's the, uh, the annual uh, award show for the Dutch television. Um, and uh, we did that uh, in combination with mechanical track system as well as with an optical track system on a pedestal. Maybe Tolson can say what kind of bio was used on that. So, uh, um, in that case, it was actually a Viatrack F infrared right because we like to have the right the reliability it could have been in one of the other systems as well in that case it did not matter that much uh so we were flexible in that yeah Thank and this you. is definitely a live show so uh there's no uh, no recording so that was live and it was mm -hmm. for a lot of departments it was uh um people were a bit of yeah i don't want to say afraid but uh on an award show, everybody is very keen that nothing happens and that people say, oh, it's, uh, it was manipulated, etc. So uh, they wanted to have everything perfect and together with NAP, it, we did, everybody delivered the perfect show. So you see in the background, there's the statement from the director. Uh, uh, and he seemed to be quite happy with the result. Yes, he was uh, very excited in that video that NAP prepared. And I think it was their first live AR show, and um, they were saying they never did it before because they like to play safe, but they trusted this, all the systems they were using live at that night. So it was a great project eventually. So all our projects we showed uh, are indoors, and we keep getting outdoor-related questions. So, for example, how tracking works in an outside place such as a stadium, is it possible to cover all the surface with augmented reality? It's depending on what you would like to have. I mean, um, uh, graphic scales, uh, as long as your GPU performance is capable of delivering the, uh, the graphics. The tracking data for us, no matter if it's an optical tracking or mechanical tracking, is always the same position. So if we, if we have a smaller studio, we deliver the same position as we do a larger scale. Oh, and it's, it's uh, even big award shows. We did two years ago the uh, MTV Video Music Award, and that's uh, Radio City Music Hall. That's not really a small arena, uh, and there were also set extensions. Mm -hmm. and, um, it's, and if you do it outdoor, uh, as Dawson mentioned, of course, if, if, the, if it's misty, if it's, if it's dark, if, it's, uh, if yeah, lenses are flooded with rain, of course, optical systems do have some limitations. And therefore, you rely on mechanical tracking. Uh, but you can't put mechanical tracking on a Steadicam operator unless uh, you have a Boston uh, robotics uh, uh, robot uh, that has all the tracking uh, possibilities. But that's why, Dawson mentioned, we, we are also consulting and we are supporting the client. So most of all, you, first of all, you have graphic designers that have ideas. I rather would say they have visions than ideas. Uh, and our goal is to, to make those visions technically possible. 
on the tracking part. And therefore, we support them uh, on the sales side as well as on the special project side, which means rental in that case, uh, to tell them, okay, this is your vision and we can provide you these systems because this is something that definitely works in this environment. So in short words, both would work. You can use a mechanical system, a crane like this, the telescopic crane or a rail system, whatever. And you can also use Viotrek R and have a flexible camera inside the arena. So both will work. I want to show that uh, last year's IBC, we used equipment, one of the tallest cranes, I want to say, in our, uh, in our boot, uh, alongside, of course, Trackman. And surprise, we have it in our studio as well. And let's see it, I say. Uh, Ugyan, okay. can you, uh, yes, show us? Uh, wait a minute, I will spotlight you. So yes, this is our R&D studio. Welcome, everyone. And uh, you can see our studio set up. And Martin, do you want to say which crane we're using in our studio? Yes, that's our TDT crane. The TDT crane is a modular fixed length crane. This crane can be built in various lengths uh, from uh, one and a half meters arm reach up to nine meters. And this crane uh, could be used, uh, mostly is used in a one-man operation, like we have it here also with T10, T10 but you also can have it as a, um, as a two-man operation. The crane also can be used on track. Um, and we also have possibilities to combine the mechanical tracking of this crane, which is standing fixed on the floor, together with a VIO system, and actually drive the dolly freely around. So you have a combination of optical tracking and mechanical tracking. So you have the reliability of a mechanical track crane, no matter what, what you have in the studio, and the position and orientation of the dolly could be done with an optical tracking as an add-on. Okay. And also there was a question that if you were using Zrodansti in your studio. Yes. We are, we are using zero density, of, of course, course. Of we course. do. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I answered yes, but I don't think it was... Zero density, definitely. <laughs> so what is the typical time that takes to calibrate uh, the lens, everything, the focus and the zoom, all that uh, formulas, basically, parameters, how long does it take? And maybe installation time too. Okay, installation and lens calibration, how long does so it take? Calibration takes uh, about an hour to do the measurements, plus we need more time for the processing, right? Because we run through the full range of zoom and focus very slowly, uh, getting the data we need for the calculations. The whole um, installation process is very, very different. As we showed, if you're using, for example, just a single view with VAR, check R, a drone flight, then it takes only seconds to get all the information. On the other hand side, if you install a mechanical tracking system, that definitely takes more time because you need, of course, to place the, the crane in a proper way and everything. Maybe you can describe it better. I mean, the, inst the installation and the calibration, it's all part of each other. Uh, it belongs together. So that means when you build up the crane, you already take care that everything is leveled out correctly, that everything is balanced out correctly, that at the end, you do not need to fine tweak that much at the end. As explained earlier in my product demonstration, the more precise your hardware is, the less trouble you have at the end to get it fine and to get it proper working. So um, when we do rental jobs, it's always a little bit depending on how fast do we have all our signals, how fast do we have connections, because the graphic people are some mostly situated somewhere else. For example, if you do a soccer stadium, you have graphic people at the other side of the city mostly, uh, and you have long fiber, fiber lines and connecting. So the communication, that takes time. But if you say we have everything together, all signals are there and the graphic machine is already set up and only needs to wait for the data, we say half a day, three quarter a day from complete build up of a T10 crane till it's operational. Of course, you can, you can go extensively uh, into details and that's always depending on what you need. If you have an XR stage, you maybe have to measure a curved LED wall as well because part of our service is also measuring real coordinates 
for certain positions within the decor so that the graphic people can align their 3D model to an LED wall that was built inside. So we work hand in hand as teeth of a teeth reel that, that work together. So this takes additional time. So, but in average you say it's a day and everything is, is running. But if you need to train people, for example, if you do an installation, if you hand it over, it's always depending on how high or how deep is the training level of it. Okay, thank you. So uh, we have a question, which is a very hot topic recently. So I want to show virtual audience what technology will work to cover the entire soccer field. S soccer field. So it's actually both a real tangent question and also tracking question. So do you guys want to start? Yeah, you can apply different uh, systems to it. You can use a mechanical uh, tracking system because usually in a stadium, in an arena, you have just a, um, um, not a pedestal, a fixed position, a fixed head, right? A pan tilt head only. Therefore, we have the technology to measure the exact position of this head. And they, then you can use that one or alternatively using optical camera tracking, which is measuring the position in relation to the soccer field more or less automatically, and you can freely place your camera inside the arena. Both is possible. And the rest is zero density business. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, on the, can we handle an entire soccer stadium? Uh, I think we should have a conversation uh, with the gentleman <laughs> who was asking the question. Our we should talk about the project. <laughs> our business development manager is not being humble. It's a it's a yes yeah <laughs> so it can be done um so let's uh well talk about the tracking capabilities actually so uh, this is demonstrated in our uh boot in zero density in nab and ibc as well but here's the question how does tracking work with multiple people in the frame like can you get in in front of the virtual person or how does it work you mean the question if we're standing in front or behind a virtual object? Yes, basically, uh, the, this tracking system gives us interactivity with the virtual elements. So how can uh, multiple real talents interact with these AR objects? What happens if they go front? What happens if, well, yeah, just well, the, the general interactivity. At the moment, we are providing just the camera tracking system, right? Yeah. This gives you the information where the camera is located in 3D space. The question about interactivity with humans is something completely different. So we can provide a tracking system for the humans and this will deliver the data, right? But this is the new chapter, maybe too much for today. Maybe we're having a new webinar for that one only, but there are systems from us which are able to give you all the information uh, for interactivity between humans and the virtual world. Yeah, and I want to add a few things because it is not, uh, as Torsten suggests, it is not just a camera tracking uh, issue, it is also a compositing issue. Uh, so I just want to say uh, on Reality Engine, we are able to manage uh, multi-planes and we are able to make uh, compositing with multi-planes in different depths. So it is perfectly possible. Um, maybe we should also discuss that uh, <laughs> with the gentleman. Well, I uh, think the question is more related. Is, is it possible de with the tracking to determine somebody in, within a 3D space? But um, these are as Torten explained, two individual systems which can be combined, definitely, uh, and that's very important. Uh, but the tracking, no matter if it's optical tracking or mechanical tracking, just tells the position of the camera within the space in relation to the origin uh, and the coordinate system. So it's not there to track something else, but that's a different system and that's, uh, yeah, can be combined. Of course, yeah. Yes, and the compositing um, effect there would be real talent's shadow would fall onto the virtual elements and vice versa, which shows how photorealistic this interactivity is. And well, that's another uh, webinar topic as well. 
Yeah. It's so a webinar we're... week. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. So we are wrapping up. It's been, um, well, more than an hour for sure. Uh, so if you have final questions, we'll take them now and then we will close the session. So do you have any video tutorial available for your setup, equipment setup and lens calibration? Video tutorial. Usually we instruct our people to make sure that they really get the message and that they can really handle it. So we're not only sending a video over and say, be happy. We like to instruct the people. So if you become a client, then you will be probably Probably, properly instructed by us. Yeah, <laughs> and you you getting training documentation. Huh? So it's uh, if you if you just it's it, it's not like unboxing a new uh, mobile phone. Uh, it's it's it has a lot of <laughs> complexity around it. So if we just post a calibration uh, uh, quick tutorial, uh, it's it's not gonna work out. But of course, when we do we do have internal videos and we do have documentation about it and we provide it. When we provide the training or the handover to a client. Okay, thank you. This this was the final question, actually. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Uh, for the registration part, we asked people if they had any experience using a tracking system in a virtual studio environment, and two thirds of the uh, participants said yes, but one third did not have any experience. So. We really hope that we answered their questions and gave them an idea how this technology works, how these different products integrate with each other and the value they provide to everyone around the globe because they, we are all global companies. If you have further questions, do not hesitate to send an email. Um, we will follow up. And Martin and Torsten, thank you so much for joining us today. It was a great, great webinar. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you for hosting. So, thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Yes. Thanks thank to you. all viewers. Thank you. Thanks, guys. This was it. And hope to see you on another webinar.